Atmospheric water generation has carved its niche in water-stricken areas. Initially, these machines were used in very arid climates in remote rural areas with little access to fresh water. As the technology has improved and the cost has dropped, it is now making its way into ordinary households where tap water may not be the best quality. As covered in our previous video, there are five technologies to accumulate water out of humid air. Two technologies are passive while three are active. The passive technologies include fog nets and hydrophilic condensation. The active technologies include thermoelectric generators, desiccant generators, and vapor compression generators. In this video, we will talk about desiccant generators and will focus on hydro panels by a manufacturer called Source Global. The main advantage of desiccant atmospheric water generation or AWG in short is that the majority of energy input required is in the form of heat. In terms of the amount of water it can generate per day per unit volume, desiccant AWG sits between thermoelectric and vapor compression water generation. The other two technologies depend purely upon electricity, but as mentioned earlier, in desiccant AWG, since mostly heat is required, it can be coupled with solar energy. Let's have a look at the schematic diagram of desiccant technology. Humid air is sucked and is passed through a desiccant wheel. The commonly used materials in desiccant wheels are silica gel, zeolite molecular sieve, and lithium chloride. These materials are hydrophilic, that is, once the humid air passes through them, they remove the moisture and dry air is left behind. In a separate loop, air is heated by passing it through a heater which makes the air more thirsty. The air is then passed through the desiccant wheel. The hot air is able to remove the same moisture that was initially deposited by the incoming air in the desiccant wheel. The hot air becomes relatively more saturated with water. Note that water absorption capacity of air rises exponentially with the rise in temperature. Similarly, water retention capacity also drops dramatically with drop in temperature. So the relatively moist hot air is then passed through an air-cooled condenser. The drop in temperature of the hot moist air results in condensation and collection of water. The advantage of using hot moist air is that even if we drop its temperature to ambient temperature, condensation would occur. There is just one difference between a desiccant dehumidification unit and a desiccant water generator. In the former, that is a dehumidifier, the purpose is to maximize water collection from a closed space. Therefore, warm air is released by the dehumidifier to pick up more moisture from the surroundings. The warm air is a byproduct. In the desiccant water generation system, the goal is to maximize water collection from an open space. Therefore, releasing warm air out is not beneficial. In fact, the energy inside the warm air is reused by recirculating it. Now that we have learned the basic technology behind the desiccant water generator, let's discuss the hydro panel developed by Source Global. The residential panel R3 priced at 2950 per unit, including deposit, domestic connection kit, and warranty, are sold in pairs and can yield an average of 4 to 10 liters of clean water per day. For heating the air, instead of an electric heater, solar energy is directly used. The blower fan inside is run by a small PV panel. The hydro panel unit is completely self-powering and self-regulating, that is, it does not require any external source of power. It can function with as low as 10% relative humidity in the air and has a 15-year warranty. There is little that can go wrong with the parts used. The electrical components include a simple motor and a PV panel, both of which are very sturdy. Compared to this, the vapor compression water generator can produce almost 10 times more water for a given space, but is more energy intensive. The most efficient water compression unit would consume at least one unit of electricity for 3.3 liters of water. So the cost of energy is an issue, whereas with the hydro panel, as mentioned earlier, the operational cost is almost zero as it produces its own energy.
The downside of the hydro panel is that it has to be installed on the roof or in an open space with access to sunlight. The second issue is that the amount of space required is also high and it is also slightly heavy. The dry weight is about 300 pounds. The R3 panels are 6 feet long, 4 feet wide and 44 inches tall when mounted at 45 degrees. For a family of four to meet the requirements, a lot of space would be required. On the other hand, less space will be needed if a vapor compression unit is used like the Jenny from Watergen and solar panels are installed on the rooftop to meet the energy requirements. Having said that, hydro panels have a strong case for usage in off-grid location. If this technology is further refined and the price is reduced, then there is a huge scope for it, not just in areas with no access to drinking water, but also in places where people would like to have an alternative to their existing mains water supply. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, then please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.